So as I promised to you last Saturday, um, uh, here is the video where I tell you about this very strange thing that happened to me. Strange enough to change the course of my life. Um, uh, it happened 19 years ago and it was followed by 19 years of trying to work out exactly what happened on that day. Uh, so I was a student at the time, as I told you, studying hotel management. I was very, very bored in a small uh, seaside resort on the south of England. And um, it was March, and in seaside resorts in March, not very much happens. And I needed something more than a couple of shops in the high street and a McDonald's as culture. You know, I wanted something more than that. Call me crazy. And uh, it, had, it was nearly the end of the month and I was nearly out of money. Uh, I had, I can't remember, I had about £30 left, something ridiculously small left. Um, and I had the choice of either spending the week buying food for the rest of the week or buying um, uh, a ticket to London and having a great time and maybe making do with the um, uh, packet of mouldy bread that was on the shelf and that actually wasn't too mouldy and I'm sure it'll last for another week <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and I decided to go with the trip to London, of course. Uh, so... <laughs> because, because I was 19, yeah. Uh, so, so I got myself to the train station. I bought myself a return ticket to make sure that I had enough money to, to come home and <laughs> didn't spend all my money in, in, uh, in London and not leave myself with enough to get home. Bought my ticket in advance. The sensible thing to do. Got myself to London and I had a wonderful time. I, I started off at the IMAX. I can't believe I managed to get to the IMAX. I had 30 pounds and I still had enough money to get a train. This is the year 2000. Enough money for a train to London uh, a ticket to the IMAX. I went to see Fantasia 2000, which is why I remember that it was the year 2000. Um, and I also, when I got out of uh, the IMAX, uh, I went to the Criterion uh, to stand in line for leftover tickets. At the time, it's, possible, it's possibly still the case now, uh, if you stood outside the Criterion um, at around one o'clock in the afternoon, uh, you could get access to whatever tickets were left over for the day and at, at some significantly reduced prices, uh, including some for five pounds. So so I, I joined the queue, got to the front of the queue. Uh, I knew that I was going to a uh, to a, an art gallery in the afternoon. I went to the Tate Britain. Uh, by the way, Tate Britain, go there. Don't go to Tate Modern if you're visiting London. <laughs> little, li little bit of advice. If you want to see good art, it's Tate Britain, not Tate Modern. Okay, back to the story. Uh, got to the front of the queue and there were a number of options. And But for £5, the, the options were quite um, significantly... Uh, there was a smaller uh, number of, of options. But one of them was the Reduced Shakespeare Company. The entire works of Shakespeare in an hour. If you've seen it or if you know about it, you know that it's a comedy um, and that they don't really do the entire works of Shakespeare in an hour. But, um, but, but that was the title and that was what it was selling itself as. And I thought, the entire works of Shakespeare in an hour, that's perfect. I will be able to make my train home, which is at half past ten. Uh, and the, the the show starts at eight o'clock. Ideal. I'll be uh, I'll be in the train by half past nine. Uh, so, <laughs> so I bought a ticket for the theatre, knowing that the last train home was going to be at half past ten. Yeah, mm, well done. I had a wonderful time at the art gallery, and then the the show started, and it was fantastic. It was absolutely hilarious. But it got to nine o'clock and the show was showing uh, no sign of finishing. Um, in fact, there had just been an interval. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and the second part was really barely beginning. Uh, and I thought to myself, oh, I'm maybe cutting this a little bit 
short and uh, it would be rude for me to leave in the... <laughs> what was I thinking? <sighs> anyway, um, long story short, by the end of the show, I was... Um, I was pretty sure I was going to miss my train. It was, it was about 10 o'clock and I had to get myself, first of all, to the underground and then through the underground to the, to the, uh, to the, the, the overground, the, the main train station in Liverpool Street. Um, and uh, actually, I'm trying to get past, excuse me, sorry, sorry, trying to get past people. Got myself down to the, uh, to, to the underground I start, this is the point at which I started praying. So if you haven't seen my previous video, do have a look at the previous video because this happened about, this story happens about one year later. Okay, so I've been thinking about God quite a lot, thinking about uh, the contents of the Bible quite a lot, thinking about um, uh, the, uh, the, the teachings uh, from, from the, the Old and the New Testament quite a lot. And, um, and so I start praying. Okay, well, if it's if it's all that, let's put it to the test, right? So so I start praying, <laughs> and um, uh, and I am praying. Please, please let me catch a train that's going to let me get back home tonight. <laughs> what I need to tell you as well is that being a, a an idiotic nineteen year old, because I was when I was nineteen year old. Um, I still am to some... Moving on. <laughs> I was wearing a shirt in March because who needs more than a shirt um, uh, when it's 10 degrees outside during the day? Uh, but it wasn't the day anymore. It was, uh, it was, it was night and... Um, yeah, I was, I was a little bit worried. Got to Liverpool Street. The train had gone. The train had gone about five minutes earlier and there was one train left that was going in that direction and it was terminating in Colchester. Now I knew Colchester a little bit because uh, it was the closest place where there was life. <laughs> and some friends of mine who had cars uh, would drive there occasionally, maybe twice or three times a year, uh, just to, uh, to, to visit some shops or to have a nice time uh, at the weekend. And I'd been in one of these cars, uh, uh, some friends had taken me there, and I knew that it took about 45 minutes to drive from, uh, from Clacton to Colchester and, and, and therefore the other way around as well. And I thought to myself, okay, well, this is a fast train to Colchester. The train that I've missed would have stopped at every station before Colchester. Um, so the fact that this one leaves 20 minutes later means that maybe it'll get to Colchester in time for me to catch the other train that will then take me to Clayton. So I get onto this other train to Colchester, crossing my fingers because my ticket is only valid today. It's only valid for 24 hours. So, um, so I, I'm in the train and I'm praying harder than ever. <laughs> Please, please let me get to Colchester um, in time to, uh, to, to catch the other train. I'm visualising it and I'm, I'm thinking about how it's going to be like when I get to Colchester and the other train is still going to be there. And uh, the train goes and goes and goes and at about half past eleven uh, it arrives in Colchester and it slows down. I'm looking out the window. Is the train still there? Is it still there? And I can't see. <laughs> and the, my train slowly, slowly, gradually grinds to a halt because this is the terminal uh, for, for, for it. And I can see it's still there. It's still there. So I'm pushing on the doors to open. Come on, come on, come on. On the button of the doors. They eventually slide open like so slowly. I'm like, come on, get out of there. I'm running and there's, there's this um, uh, a metal bridge that I have to cross. So I'm running up the stairs of the metal bridge and I'm shouting, please hold the other train, please hold the other train. So I'm running, running up these stairs and I get to the top of the stairs and I can hear beep, 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 beep like the beeping of the doors of the other train closing. 
and I'm running, running over this uh, over this bridge, and I can hear the train start. The train starting. It grinds. <laughs> oh no, no! I ran, run downstairs, and I can see. You know, I, I'm just watching the train just leaving the platform, and and that's it. That's the last train of the day. So I'm devastated, <laughs> but more than that, I, I just don't know what to do next because my ticket's only valid for 24 hours. I've got no more money. I have spent every penny. I, I, I've had a, a 99 pence sandwich <laughs> for lunch. Uh, the only change that I've got left in my pocket is yeah, a few coppers, maybe 7p, <laughs> something like that. Definitely not enough to do anything with. And if I don't get home tonight, tomorrow I'll, I'll have no way of, of getting home. But more than that, it's almost midnight now and I'm freezing cold. So I'm standing on the station and, uh, and and there's a bench and I sit down on the bench and I'm trying to think about what I can possibly do and I think maybe I can maybe I can stay on this bench and uh, a guard arrives and uh, he says, "All right, son, uh, you know, out we out we go now. We're uh, we're, we're locking up for the night." And I said, "Listen, I, I I've I've missed my last train. I live in Clacton. Uh, what can I do? Uh, I'm sorry." Can't can't help. Um, I'm I'm going home now. <laughs> I'm like, well, uh, uh, can I stay on the bench? No, no, no. We we're we're closing up for the night. Um, the the station will open again tomorrow morning, six o'clock. You can be here. I I, I my, my ticket's gonna run out. I've got no no money to to take the train tomorrow. Uh, that that's it. That's the end of that's the end of uh, my abilities to get home. Um, and of course, you have to remember because. Because it, it's it's obvious to me, but of course it may not be obvious to you. No phones, no 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 mobile phones. It's the year two thousand. I got my first phone the following year, um, so so you know nothing like <laughs> nothing like calling my friends or or anything like that. You couldn't even if there had been any uh, pay phones, I didn't have money to to work it. Uh, so so really completely out of resources. So I had to accept my fate, you know, I, I, I thought to myself, well, I'm going to have to walk home. There's no other solution. So I, I left the station, they, they, they locked up the gate, the, the guard locked up the gate behind me. And there I was in, in the dark, there was a, like a, a dingy, you know, vaguely yellow street lamp, um, and I was under a bridge and a street going in both directions. I could see that there was a some kind of roundabout, uh, and then yeah, more branches on the other side. Where do I even start? You know, no Google Maps, of course. No, no idea where to turn. And so, um, and so I prayed again and I prayed for a sign. Please give me a sign. In which direction should I start walking? I need to get home. Please show me a sign, any sign. And I wait and I look around and I saw that there was a, uh, a plastic bag uh, that was just doing this. <laughs> and it was the only movement. Literally, it was the only, it was absolute silence, darkness, little bit of light from this, from this yellow mm, street lamp and this, just this bag. So I walk towards the bag because it's the only sign that I can see. Walk towards the bag, walk past the bag and, and there's, there's a road and I see a sign that says Clacton on Sea, 16 miles. I'm like, oh my goodness, 16 miles, okay. All right, 
Uh, so it's, it's midnight and I start walking and I walk and I walk and I walk and I walk. And there are a couple of cars go by. I stick my thumb out, uh, you know, wave. Nobody stops, of course, you know, it's late at night. Uh, I, I guess you don't want to be taking on strangers, right? I mean, you can't really blame people. And, uh, and I continue walking, I continue walking, and eventually I come to the motorway. And I have to, there's no more pavement, of course, so I have to start walking on the grass. And the grass is really cold and my, under my feet, and I'm, I'm shivering, uh, you know, I'm just in this shirt. Yeah, uh, and you know the the about it's about a car every two or three minutes, and then there's a car every five, ten minutes. And it gets to one o'clock, and I keep putting my thumb out. I keep praying, please, 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 let one of these cars stop, but none of them do. I keep putting my thumb out. Walking, 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 trying to keep myself warm. It gets two o'clock in the morning and I'm exhausted. I'm absolutely exhausted. The only thing that I've eaten is the sandwich that I had at lunch. And yeah, I am tired and I know that I'm nowhere near home. Um, and I continue walking, I continue walking. And, and, the more I walk, the deeper I get into my prayer. And I get into this, into a trance, because I'm hungry, and because of the repetition of the, you know, just me and my breathing, and the repetition of, of the, the steps, and, and I'm constantly praying, constantly praying. And then, and then I remember that a friend of mine at university had worked out that I was reading the Bible, and he was a proper fundamentalist Christian um, but one of the things that he told me was when you pray you should be very precise about your prayers and I dismissed that as uh, as, uh, as being a little bit arrogant uh, at the time uh, but uh, but I thought well I've got nothing to lose uh, and so uh, and so I I do I start praying for something very specific I pray for a white car, a large white car, um, with a leather interior, because why not? Um, and a nice sound system with some nice music playing. And um, I was away from home. I, I'd grown up in France and my parents were still in France and my father was a smoker and he would smoke in his car. Um, uh, it was the eighties. Um, and, uh, but to me, the idea of a middle-aged male smoking felt like um, safety. Uh, it, I thought it'll make me feel comfortable, it'll make me feel safe. Um, I was a smoker at the time. Uh, so, um, uh, so yeah, let the car be driven by a middle-aged male smoker. and let it arrive in five minutes. <laughs> if we're gonna be precise, that's what I really, really want. Five minutes. And I walk, and I walk, and I walk. One minute. Nothing. Two minutes. Three minutes. Four minutes, still nothing. Five minutes, nothing. I look, I'm actually in the very, very, very distance the two headlights and okay so uh, so I stop and I just wait for these headlights to arrive they come closer and closer and closer I stick my thumb out I make myself nice and visible stick my thumb out and the car comes arrives and it goes straight by me but then it stops and I'm like, oh, it did stop. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I run up to it and it's white. And I can't believe it. And, and then I get closer and I realize that plastered along the side of it, 
the words taxi with a phone number. And I'm like, no, I can't afford a taxi. I've got no money for a taxi. So I run up to the taxi. I'm like, no, 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 forget it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't know. And the I see the um, the window just going going down and the guy the guy calls out to me. And he goes, uh, where, where are you going? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hadn't realized you were a taxi. And I said to him, uh, I, I've, I've got no more money. I've run out completely of money. Uh, I've got a checkbook. I can write you a check, but it'll bounce. So I, I, literally, I've got no money. Forgive me. I'm sorry for wasting your time. Um, and he said, no, 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 no. D- don't worry about it. It's okay. Um, wh- where are you going? And I said, well, I, I, I'm trying to get to Clacton. It's been a long day. Uh, and he said, uh, uh, "Well, I'm I'm actually going to Clacton too. Uh, that, that's where I live, and it's the end of my it's the end of my uh, of my shift. So uh, just just hop in. It's fine. No no, no problem. I'm like really? <laughs> so so I open the door and and I get in, and it's a leather interior, and and I close the door, and uh, and he asks me, you know, how on earth did you get into this situation? And I tell I tell him the whole story." And, uh, and he s- switches on the stereo, and it's uh, actually he's got the stereo on already. Um, uh, and uh, you know, playing some 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 nice music. And uh, and he's driving, and uh, and he turns around to me and he says, uh, "Listen, it's been a pretty long day for me as well. Do you, do you mind if I smoke?" <laughs> so <laughs> so I said, "No, no, no, go ahead." Go ahead, please be my guest. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, in fact, I think I even rolled him a cigarette of my own. Um, I, uh, very, very surprising. He drove me all the way home. He drove me all the way to uh, to my halls of residence, and uh, and I remember asking him for his. Uh, for his business card, he, he dr- just literally drove drove up to to my front door and um, uh, up to the front door of, of my halls, and uh, and I I said to him, listen, give me a, give me a business card so that I can forward you some money once I get paid next week. Uh, once I get paid, once I receive some money from my parents next week. Uh, and he said, no, 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 listen, don't worry about it. Um, just next time you see. Uh, a charitable collection uh, for children. Make sure you put in a couple of quid for me. So, so I have been uh, uh, at every opportunity. Um, and he he drove drove off, and I remember trying to remember his his number plate, and and then a few moments later I'd forgotten it, and. Uh, and he was gone, and I was safe and sound at home, uh, in in at, at my at my halls of residence. A very very um, emotional uh, experience, as you can imagine, and and it set me on a um, on a on a on a fascinating life, actually, um, because I have done everything since. To try and work out exactly what happened uh, on that day, so I studied, I studied religions, I studied all kinds of world religions, trying to understand the uh, the common points between them all, um, uh, realizing that there actually is um, uh, stuff that I'll tell you about in in another video, I think. Um, but uh, but yeah, for now, uh, I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, yeah, tune in again soon when I tell you about the things that I discovered about uh, about answered prayers and about um, uh, how they may work. Um, and uh, yeah, my my discoveries for the following twenty years. Um, yeah, I don't think I would have become, I don't think, I know I wouldn't have become a teacher of religious studies if it hadn't been for that experience. Um, uh, and, and the research that I did as a consequence of that. So yeah, I'm, 
who knows, maybe, maybe the driver will see this video one day. Uh, I, I really hope you do. And, and if you do, um, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Um, if you, if you know anyone in the Colchester area, um, or in the Clacton area, um, and you know anyone who is a, uh, who, who was a taxi driver back in the year 2000, maybe forward the video to them. Um, I'd be very grateful. I'd be very, very grateful. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. See you soon.